again with hot topics as with ethics um it's it's difficult to know exactly what's going to come up uh, and i would suggest each dental school might be a little bit different the obvious one at the moment is obvious is covid um so they'll probably ask maybe a, a broad question about how covid's going to impact on dentistry um just a, a general um, bit of advice when you're answering questions that are quite open-ended i would try and stick to either three or four points um take your three points and then try and expand them a little bit more um don't do more don't have that um sort of scattered gun approach where you just fire out loads of information that's all quite shallow in knowledge try and say something then follow it up with a little bit of depth um because then that also shows sort of a broad understanding so um with 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 COVID at the moment, the, the three main things that I've picked out and we talked about last night, the, the first one's waiting times. Um, obviously the impact of, of, of closures, um, which fundamentally happened across the whole board um, in dentistry will infect, uh, sorry, will affect waiting times um, for everyone really. So that's obviously in NHS dentistry, um, but also hospital based dentistry. Um, so this, the level of care that we can deliver reduced, yeah. Um, the other thing that you've got to consider on waiting times, it's inconvenient for patients, but also lots of patients with existing disease weren't treated. So the waiting times, this shows a sort of uh, a great depth of thinking, the waiting times you might have people with, who had, for example, shallow caries, which is a hole in the tooth, and that could have been fixed quite easily, but because of COVID, it got quite big, and they ended up needing either the tooth out or root canal. So you could have had fairly mild disease progressing. The other things with waiting times, and I think this would come across in a good candidate, is don't necessarily just talk about sort of general dental practice, perhaps talk about um, things like paediatric dentistry or maxillofacial, which are all sub-branches of dentistry. Um, the waiting times affect hospitals as well. So paediatric or dental extractions, the waiting list is much longer for that as well. So um, exploring not over general practice, but potentially mentioning hospital-based dentistry would show that you're a candidate that has a reasonable understanding of the broader aspects of dentistry as well. Um, then the next thing about COVID would be infection control as well. Um, infection control and sort of that aspect of dentistry and medicine is really important. It's, a, it's always a hot topic generally. Um, and obviously with COVID, it, it's even more of a hot topic. So with infection control, you just need to potentially talk about how um, there's an increased demand from regulators on keeping everything nice and clean. Um, one aspect we will say is that in dentistry, um, you write this down if anyone's got a pen and paper, it's something called fallow time. Um, this is a very, basically it was a directive across basically the, goal, uh, the world um, and fallow time is the amount of time afterwards um, that, a, that a dental surgery couldn't be used and that's because of airflow. Okay, um, so if you talk about fallow time, you don't have to go into it about much detail, but all it is is that basically when you drill in, COVID could go up into the atmosphere of the room and it takes about an hour to settle. So there's been lots of changes around in dental practice, including air ventilation and making sure obviously you've got robust infection control procedures um, in place. Um, the other side of it as well, uh, again, I concentrated on general practice then. Again, for a really good candidate, you could say how infection control impacts on patients in a time where everyone's heightened about disease and obviously COVID, there needs to be a demonstration to patients that you're keeping everywhere clean and safe. So with COVID, you need to have like zoned areas, people separated, et cetera. Um, Saad, uh, Saeed Saad, sorry, I'm so bad with names. Um, does it apply for procedures which aren't aerosol generated? So briefly, aerosol generated procedures, for those who don't know, is anything that uses water really, water in a high speed drill, because that produces an aerosol that goes off into the atmosphere. Um, I wouldn't learn it in much more detail than that because there's lots of gray areas and caveats, and I don't think you'll be expected to know it for a, a dental interview. Um, ultimately, if it's not an aerosol generating procedure, there's no follow time. Okay, so if you make a denture, for example, you don't use the drill, then therefore you don't um, have this fallow time. It's only for these aerosol generating procedures. Um, and the, the, the last thing, um, where have I written it? About um, COVID. Again, this, I think this would be explained by a really good candidate, but it's something about contract reform. Um, so 
I hope you're all aware where you should be. And if you're not, go and have a look at it. Currently in place, there's something called the UDA system. Um, you've got tiers of UDAs. So you've got band one, band two, band three, and then an emergency band, uh, which is band 1.2. Um, and that governs um, basically how much treatment costs in certain areas. From the dental profession generally, um, there's been a little bit of pushback from it for various reasons. Um, but it's, we can't go into them and it's, I probably wouldn't think you would expect it to know it as well. But what COVID is potentially pushing is a little bit of contract reform. So potentially the governing body is considering changing how the UDA system works and moving from a treatment based payment system ultimately to more of a prevention based system um, where what you would get is potentially almost like a salary dentist where you get paid a certain amount of money for looking after a certain amount of patients and then get paid for the treatment if they need it and that puts the onus on a prevention based model rather at the moment which is a treatment based model is, is how i would describe it to apply to dentistry as a graduate and today I entered the dental mentor MMI interview practice. I learned a lot more about the types of interview questions, how to portray myself at interview and I also got a lot of helpful feedback on things I should change, things I should say and things I shouldn't say. So overall I found this experience very very helpful.